You absolutely have to tell your spouse. They need to know. And hopefully they can find it, you know, within themselves to understand more. When men could disclose the problem to their spouse, as terrifying as that is for the user, it puts them in a better position to be trusted down the road. And spouses are more likely to see their partner as a support and as a helper in the process if they can trust that, you know, he came forward with this. I didn't discover him or catch him. 92% of partners end up finding out anyway. And if you have the choice between a discovery or a disclosure, a discovery of a pornography problem absolutely changes the entire dynamics about how wives are willing to work and react to a particular issue of this type in a marriage. So what should a spouse do in this situation? How should they react? And how can they be supportive when their partner discloses an addiction to pornography? It is not their job to stop the pornography use. It is their job to slowly become trusting over time as they witness action-oriented change. I think you need to be clear that when you're confronting a spouse about a pornography problem, what you're saying to them in essence is, I care too much about you and our relationship to stand by idly in this marriage and do nothing. There are also behaviors that spouses should be aware of and be certain to avoid. But one thing that is not helpful is to start to become the police department, scanning, watching, looking at every phone call he makes, just checking on his computer after he leaves, looking through his bills, checking his phone. That certainly doesn't build intimacy in a relationship. It actually puts more distance between them. I don't ask any details. I just allow him to come to me and he would tell me and I would not say, well, how long did you look? Well, what did you see? That is helpful for them not to be too intrusive because it doesn't really matter. The fact that she knew I had a problem on a particular day um, was all she needed to know. The point is not to heap more shame on to the person who's already loaded with shame. That's why they're keeping it secret in the first place. So your reaction is very crucial to whether that person's going to get help. Look at your husband through the eyes of that you love him. And if you can look at him as what his potential is and who he can become, then that's the first step, I believe, in helping them get through it. Counseling from professionals, clergy, or both can also be helpful in most cases. We had counseling, which was very helpful in dealing with some of those feelings that we weren't quite sure what we were feeling, uh, and, and church leaders. We had an amazing church leader, so supportive in everything, and calling us in and talking to us and allowing us to work through without without criticizing, without condemning, without making us feel like, uh, you know, we didn't belong. I would not be in the therapeutic profession if I didn't also believe that there's a great deal of hope. It's exciting to see couples recovering together and reaching new heights in their intimacy and, and relationship. It's something that, uh, that if both of you have hope, you can get through. It's not going to be easy, but yes, there's hope that people can abandon and overcome successfully the presence of pornography problems in their lives. It's amazing how it becomes less and less of a problem and less and less of a struggle. It's improved all of his relationships all the way around and he has an empathy for people that wasn't there before. There's a lot of hope because when you don't give up and you keep on it, there is so much joy and there is so much happiness. Mike and Jenna have taught us that it is possible to overcome pornography addiction and enjoy rich relationships again. But Dr. Seeley reminds us that the word overcome may not be completely accurate in describing one who is in recovery for addiction. Much like a chronic illness, pornography addiction must be managed through vigilance and commitment over time if there is to be true recovery. It's something you manage every day and you take it one day at a time. And that's the general approach we use with this behavior. At this point, uh, the addiction model still seems to be the best model to work with this particular behavior, namely internet pornography. It's been said it's far better to have a fence at the top of the cliff rather than an ambulance at the bottom. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And when it comes to the influence of pornography, prevention is absolutely vital. Even though we trust our children, do not trust the pornography industry. They are ruthless. They are all about the dollar bill, and they want to groom this young generation to be the, the next group of adult consumers. Some parents, of course, 
are going to look for filters to put on the computer, which I suppose can block them getting to it, but all you may do is just train your team how to get to it even more efficiently and more secretively than before, which really doesn't give them any explanation as to why you're concerned about it. The reality is our parents will not be able to totally protect their kids from these messages or even these materials. The question is, have parents instilled in their children the right kind of moral compass that will allow their kids to say no to pornography, no to these messages, no to the myths and lies of the culture about this issue. Every expert we spoke with agreed that parents must talk openly with their children about the harmful effects of pornography, as well as answer their questions about human sexuality in a safe environment where important values can be transmitted. In families where parents aren't willing to talk about sex and where it becomes a taboo or forbidden subject, there's three things we see. One, they experiment sexually at an earlier age. Two, more of the experimentation is unprotected. And three, higher rates of unintended or unwanted teenage pregnancies occur in those types of families. Parents have an option. They can either opt out of the dialogue with their kids recognizing that other forces and other messages are being received by their kids all the time or they can jump in it's very important to have a dialogue with your child and i'm talking about much younger than than teen certainly by eight or nine every family is different every child is different you decide what the right age is then subtract three years and then you're only a year late and that's really not a joke that's the reality of where we are and talking to our kids about pornography and these messages. We as parents, we need to make a critical decision about whose voice is going to get to them first and whose voice is going to win out. So it works like a scale. Parents have the opportunity to press hard on the scale with what they believe and the messages and the truths that they want to deliver to their kids and young people, or they can let the culture, pornography, TV, movies, and peers deliver those messages and they will be messages that the parents do not approve of and prove to be destructive. So parents must engage in this dialogue. While it's true that in today's culture we are surrounded by highly sexualized and pornographic messages, it's also true that as loving families armed with knowledge, we have the tools to combat these messages. We need not fear, but rather be aware and be willing to act. Thanks for joining us on Real Families, Real Answers. If you would like to know more about how to protect your family from pornography, or if you'd like to get information about addiction, visit our website at realfamiliesrealanswers.org. There you will find helpful articles and links to this as well as other important topics we explore in the series. Thank you.